84. He was considered by many the greatest defensive coordinator ever. Keyshawn, you saw Monty up close and personal when you won a Super Bowl with those Buccaneers 2002. How will you remember Monty Kiffin? Well, much like, much like you said, uh, Skip, Monty was the time that I've been around him, both as a Buccaneer player and at USC and even as recent as a couple years ago. He will, by far, in my opinion, go down as the greatest, as of now, as the greatest defensive coordinator ever. And I know that there are people that would say, well, what about Bill Belichick? Bill Belichick, yeah. yeah you could... Yeah, and, put, and I, I would put Buddy Ryan in the conversation. You could, you could put yeah. Buddy Ryan in the yeah. conversation. Yeah. There's no question about it. But I watched that defense up you close did. in person, yeah. both playing against them yeah. and also being a part of the team. And practicing against them. And practicing them. against yeah. them. And when you think about it, Bill Belichick won a lot of Super Bowls as a head coach and in orchestrated of the, whatever defenses they were. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of Hall of Famers coming off of his defenses, okay? I mean, in, in, in his defenses, outside of the Lawrence Taylor years and the Giants, was never known as one of the greatest defenses in the history of the league. This defense is known as one of the greatest history, one of the top four defenses ever. I mean, ever. You, you can make a good case. It could be that number one. I don't, I, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to say the best. It's just one of the top four. And when you talk about the players for a, a period of time, about a, about a nine-year stretch, nobody wanted to play against our defense. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody I said. I agree with that. They just didn't want to do it. And certain guys <clears throat> came and went. But then there was the Derrick Brookses, the Rondé Barbers, the Brian Kellys, the Shelton Causes, the Warren Saps, the Simeon Rices, the Johnny Lynches. When you start to think about that, off of his defense in that time period, there's going to be, you already got Brooks, you got Sapp, you got Lynch, you got Barber, Simeon Rice is the next, and that's five, okay? And Simeon belongs. And he belongs, yeah. but he'll get there, yeah. he'll get there in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But outside of his coaching presence, man, just to be around Monty, because I never played on that side of the ball for him. But I was always, I don't know, it was weird because I was an offensive guy, but I always dealt with the defense. I was always dealing with the defensive coaches, no matter what team I was on. I just, it was, it was something about the way I played that they took a liking to. Yeah. Two years ago, I uh, was at the Dickie V Foundation in Sarasota, uh, getting an award or whatever, Dickie V Foundation, Monty was there, and his kids was there and whatnot. And his daughter... His daughter, we were talking and then, and she said, you know, my dad, and, and you could see where Monty was getting a little older in the situation. He said, my dad, you know, my dad can't stop talking about you. Hmm. You're one of his favorite players to ever be around. That's great. And so that touched me mm -hmm. because I was around him, obviously, with the Bucks, but even more around him at USC when he became the defensive coordinator for us because of Lane. Because of Lane. His and I'm really Lane. close to Lane, his son, who's the head coach at Ole Miss. And, you know, that really touched me because I never played on that side of the ball. Mm. But that told me he appreciated the way that I approached the game. And that was, yeah. the, you know, he was so funny, Skip. Me tell you, so give you two quick stories about him. We play, I get traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2000 uh, from the New York Jets. It's the fourth, it's either the fourth or the fifth game of the year we play the Jets at home. Big game. Oh, it's Keyshawn versus the Jets. Mm -hmm. It's all crazy, right? That week, I didn't spend any time in the meetings with the offensive coaches. I had to sit in with the defensive coaches to give all the signals and sure. what I knew. I gave them everything. Mm. We pounding them the whole way. We getting ready to win the game. All of a sudden, at the end of the game, they throw a flea flicker halfback pass. I mean, a halfback pass from Curtis Bart to Wayne Cabet. So, game's over. You know, it's, oh, lose the, game. The, worst, it's the worst thing ever. Because I gave them oh, everything. They, oh. We look up. Oh, they're getting ready to run this play. Here's what's going to happen. Boom. It happens. Monty dialing it up. Oh. So, at, so, so check this out, though. So now we move on, Skip. We lose a game. We go to practice the next week to get ready for our opponent. Monty comes over to me in this little squeaky voice. He go, Key, man, you gave me everything right. You gave it to me. We had him. We had him. But you didn't give me the combat play. I said, well, how? I said, I didn't know about it, but it was the funny. Play, the trick Yeah, play. I said, but it was funny because that's just his, that was his personality. Yeah. You know, and he, 
He's going to be missed for sure, though, man. I, I uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. I don't want to choke up about it, but he's going to be missed. Yeah. He's going to be missed. And I know yeah. Derrick Brooks and, and, and Sapp and all the guys that played for him feel the same way. Yeah. Well, I guess he's the reason I'm not a Raider fan no more. Really? No, seriously. Was that was that who y'all played in the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's who they, they destroyed. That's the defense. That's the defense y'all put on. Rich, Rich Gannon. Yeah. The MVP that year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From that day forward, Skip, I was no that longer was a Raider fan. Growing up here in LA. It was hard to beat us, though. You <laughs> we lost five the interceptions. Five interceptions yeah. to the MVP quarterback. <laughs> MVP quarterback was because his defense. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the reason. We, that's lost, the reason. we, lost, that's we lost some games. That's the reason I'm not a Raider fan. Let's no not. Let's that's not, what I converted to Patriots. Let's not act like we didn't lose games. But the next time we played them opponents, they were scared as you know what. Mm. I mean, that's just the reality of it. They, we lost games because mm. everybody loses games. But it was going to be a hard out. Yeah. It was going to be a hard out because everybody, they ran about eight to ten plays on defense. Not complicated. Not complicated at all. Very Even simple. The, the Tampa 2 is not complicated. Yeah, but guess what? Yeah. You couldn't duplicate it mm-hmm. because it's about calling the play at the right time, yep. dialing it up at the right time, and all 11 of your defensive players had and holding their responsibilities and knowing where to be. Mm-hmm. Derrick Brooks was the Derek Brooks was the smartest football player ever been around, though, mm-hmm. by far. And the best football player ever been around. He could see it, see it before it even happens and yep. go get it. That was how our defense was. Mm-hmm. Dudes would catch slants and slide on the ground. They didn't want no parts of that. Right. Man, they, if you think I'm lying, ask people that played with us. Yeah. They would catch the ball rather than try to get extra yards, they'd go straight to the ground because they knew they was getting ready to get the you-know-what kicked out of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so it just is one of those things where people try to duplicate it from high school to college and into the pros, it never can have the same success <clears throat> that we had in Tampa with that defense. You yeah. just couldn't. So you know Derek Brooks well. Uh-huh. I know him very well because I got to work with him, had the privilege of working with him at ESPN. He's as fine a human being as I have ever known. Texted with him back and forth yesterday. I know you were in touch with him also. He was obviously devastated to lose this man because this man was the light of Derek's life. And mm-hmm. when, when Derek Brooks says, you're it, then you're it, man. And Derek was blessed to play for Monty Kiffin for 13 of his 14 Hall of Fame seasons. Mm-hmm. That, that's a real blessing. Mm-hmm. And my experience with Monty Kiffin goes way back. The first time I noticed him was, you know how big an Oklahoma Sooner fan I am. 1977, my Sooners were on the way to the Orange Bowl. Barry Switzer coaching, Billy Sims running the football. Billy Sims was really good. Mm -hmm. And they are 18-point favorites going to the Orange Bowl against Lou Holtz's Arkansas Razorbacks with the defense coordinated by Monty Kiffin. 18-point favorites because Lou had suspended his best receiver and best running back. They beat us 31 to 6. They held Billy Sims and company and Barry Switzer's offense to six points, and it was because of that man, Monty Kiffin. Then the next time I actually encountered Monty was two years later. I covered a game in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which was number two Texas at the Razorbacks. Again, Monty defensive coordinator, Lou Holtz, the head coach. And Luke, he, he could coach it, man. But they did a number on Texas that day, beat them 17 to 14. And I'm in the postgame locker room, and I see this Monty Kiffin. He is acting like a madman. I, I mean, I thought he was a lunatic because he was screaming and yelling like out of his mind, yeah. out of control. Uh-huh. And I'm saying, this guy is the defensive coordinator of the Arkansas Razorbacks? And then I began to talk to some of the players, and they swore by him. They, they mm-hmm. said he was the reason they won that game because he got them so ready to play. Mm-hmm. If, if we do the whole package of coordinating a defense, it also includes motivation. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, has there ever been a better motivator of college and pro football players than Monty Kiffin? I'm talking about having you ready on razor's edge for the football game, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, physically ready to play. That was Part of his genius also was yeah. getting you ready, getting you ready even in practice. And I, and even though, like I said, I never played on that side of the ball. Yeah. 
but the conversations and just being... He didn't rub off on no. you? Come no, on. no, I'm yeah. saying...